As the Provincial Housing Agency, Housing Nova Scotia understands that providing affordable housing is one of the most critical things we can offer. One of the ways to make homes more affordable is by reducing the energy costs without sacrificing comfort and safety. The passive house concept is proven to be one of the most cost-effective ways to build a home that is truly energy efficient, comfortable, affordable and ecological, all at the same time. Experts say that a passive house uses up to 90% less heating and cooling energy than a similar home built to local code. This video will show you that with proper planning and design, building a home to passive house standards is really not rocket science. And the long-term savings on energy costs far outweigh the modest increase in construction costs. We encourage all those who are developing housing to consider some of these energy concepts or to incorporate the passive standards to provide for safe, comfortable housing. Before any construction begins, it's important to take a close look at the area so we can take advantage of the site's natural solar heat by positioning windows and doors strategically. Of course, you'll also want to be sure to look at other houses in the area in order to maintain a consistent aesthetic. Once the construction site is ready, it's time to start laying the foundation. This particular house will have a full basement with insulated concrete form walls and will also be adding a significant amount of foam insulation beneath the foundation. To increase the overall R value of our basement walls, we'll also be using additional foam inserts. We have two layers of four inch. This is EPS insulation, which is much more environmentally friendly than the rigid XPS. Uh, the global warming impact of this product is much less, so it's why we always specify the white insulation under the slab. These principles can be applied in both full basement projects like this, or in projects with slab-on so grade construction. But either back. way, it's important to carefully right. seal any right. penetrations made in the foundation, such as the toilet penetration. So I'll just make a box around our pipe with the white tape, and then I'll start cutting six inch pieces of the 3M tape as it's more flexible to go up to the pipe. The heavy duty plastic is the radon barrier, but it's also our, uh, our air barrier. And it's surprising how much air can come up from the basement through the penetrations. Now let's talk about walls. In a conventional home, you would have a single two by six interior load bearing wall. But in a passive house, we'll actually be constructing two walls. We'll still have the standard interior wall, but we'll also have an exterior wall built with TGI joists. This is going to provide a lot of extra insulation. Now, to ensure the house is airtight, this exterior wall is going to be taped. It's also important to pay close attention to any transitions to other building components or assemblies, like where the wall meets the foundation, the roof, or these windows. So one of the things we want to do with these flat seams once they're all sealed up is we want to just make sure that it's well adhered by rubbing it in. I find using a foam block is really nice. You can use a, a J roller or a carpet roller as well. But this is good because it warms the tape up a little bit and just gets it to stick in all of those little unevennesses of the OSB. This is the outside of our OSB layer. You can see that all the joints are taped and the window bucks are taped and sealed to the OSB. We've also taped and sealed to the sill here at the bottom. So we now have that continuous air barrier on the exterior of the wall. And now we're gonna create our space for the dense pack insulation. We're maximizing our efficiency by taking advantage of argon-filled triple-pane windows with fiberglass frames and a custom coating that will soak up the house's natural solar gains. Now we'll be able to bring this Tyvek down and we'll red tape it just to continue the weather barrier. We've got the weather barrier continuous to the window with the red tape and the Tyvek. And behind that, the air barrier goes from the nailing flange out onto the plywood buck, and that goes back to the OSB layer, which is our primary air barrier. We've got silicon in behind here for a little bit of redundancy, and we're gonna spray foam in behind it for a further layer. We've already mentioned that it's important to pay close attention to penetrations throughout the house. That's especially true during mechanical and electrical rough-in work. That's why it's important to think ahead. For example, 
Even if there are no immediate plans to install a security system inside the home, it's still a good idea to rough in the wiring. That way, no additional penetrations will be needed if the homeowner decides to install one in the future. To keep heating costs low, we want to make sure we're not losing any heat to the outside or letting any cold air in. So making sure the house is airtight is crucial. That's why we'll not only be doing a blower door test when the home is complete, but also one before drywall goes up, so we can identify and seal any leaks. During this test, the fan pulls the air out of the house, lowering the air pressure inside. The higher outside pressure causes air to flow through any remaining unsealed cracks or openings. A smoke machine is used to make these leaks more noticeable. When all is said and done, the air tightness target for a passive house is almost three times greater than the target for an R2000 home. And with all the work we've done to make this house airtight, we want to make sure the air inside is high quality. And that means proper ventilation. Fresh air is supplied to the house through the HRV, which is the heat recovery ventilator. And what we have is ducts that go into each room. So all the living spaces have a supply duct and all the kitchens and baths have an exhaust duct. These ducts are all installed within the building envelope so that we don't have additional penetrations through our air barrier. We're also going to pay close attention to the penetrations and system balancing here in order to minimize heat loss. After space heating, the biggest source of energy use in a home is domestic water heating. So, we'll be installing a heat pump water heater, which is much more efficient than conventional water heating appliances. Plus, since the passive house is so well insulated and airtight, we'll be able to meet much of the other heating demands just with natural solar heat, plus the heat generated by other appliances, lighting, and the occupants themselves. That means we can choose a simple, inexpensive heating solution. In this case, electric baseboards over more expensive central heating systems. When all is said and done, apart from being incredibly energy efficient, passive houses really aren't all that different from the houses you're used to. They're simple and easy to operate, they look just like other houses, and they can be built with local contractors using local materials. With some experience and expertise, we can introduce passive houses to Nova Scotians across the province and help them unleash the power of energy efficiency.